I no longer use the phrase, uh, I still use it, but not as much, sustainability. Sustainability suggests stasis. It suggests just getting by, just barely surviving. It suggests energy efficiency. But I think there's an overarching exercise here. It has everything to do with what I think is our culture's number one mental health problem, which is how we talk to our children and how we talk to ourselves about the future. The number one young adult fiction genre today is called dystopic fiction. That's about a future in which it's post-apocalyptic and not even vampires are having a good time. If this is the dominating set of images of the future that we're accepting passively and that are shaping how we get up in the morning, what we think about in terms of what the future will be, what career could I have, then we're in trouble. There's a, even more than we know. This is a greater is issue, I think, than climate change. Because we can't do much about climate change, can't do much about the biodiversity collapse unless we do something about how we talk to our children about the future and ourselves. So I prefer talking about a nature-rich future, nature-rich cities, nature-rich schools, nature-rich uh, yards and homes, neighborhoods, a nature-rich civilization. If we don't aim a lot higher than sustainability, defined mainly as energy efficiency in the way that most people define, then we won't get to energy efficiency. We won't get to sustainability. Martin Luther King said in many ways that uh, any movement, any culture will fail if it cannot paint a picture of a world that people will want to go to. To me, that's a nature-rich world.